Last weekend, I actually had a stroke. Of genius when I decided to buy a 1988 Volvo 240. Now, <laughs> I know what you're thinking. That's, that's not genius, Matt. That's uh, a lack of impulse control. And while it hurts when you call a spade a spade, let's see if we can revive this old gal. Now, I believe that these old Volvos, they were the pinnacle of technology in the 1970s. Unfortunately, this is an 88. So the math isn't checking out well. They're pretty simple cars, so I think I got a real chance of man-braining this thing back together. But let's take a look around the outside, like two trailer park girls, thanks Eminem, and we'll see what we're working with. The only Volvo on Earth without yellow headlights. Unfortunately, this is definitely a car I've seen some years out in the sun. Every horizontal surface, clear coat's gone. While the body is pretty darn clean, for some reason all the trim has been removed from the entire car. <laughs> Whoever was taking off this license plate so put some goddamn seriously hole cameras on this bolt head. Oh, it's a stud? Yeah, ne never mind, it's stud, it's fine. Huh, can't really tell what year that was, but uh, not a good sign. But all in all, man, it's, it's got a pretty straight body. I guess to get the hood open, we pulled the Ayuga horn. Uh, well, I didn't hear anything up front, but uh, let's see if that opens it. All right, now let's see what kind of garbage awaits me. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. That's the um, engine. And, uh, oh, it's got a little light that doesn't it's probably, well, it doesn't, the battery's probably dead. It's got a Die Hard. Yeah, we'll see if it's true to its name later today. Unfortunately, I see a lot of vacuum issues already disintegrating before our very eyes. So I think um, we'll charge the battery first because that's clearly gonna bite us in the ass. And then uh, maybe we'll just start replacing some vacuum lines because I know these things are a little temperamental with that kind of garbage. So let's get a battery charger on her. Okay, get over there. And we got some hot and cold leads here. We'll get this arranged. I'm gonna go ahead and hook up the positive. We're gonna wait on the negative a second. That way we're gonna see if we create any forest fires. <laughs> That says it's fully charged, so that's not right. Let's see if we get some sparks. Okay. All right, I like the sound of that. Those little sparks I mean something's clearly happening, which is probably good. Uh, I, this battery, it's got a little bit of voltage in it. I mean, this is one of those crappy automatic battery chargers that it only charges your battery if it senses a battery. So if your battery's dead, it doesn't think it's a battery, so it won't charge. So. That's helpful in situations where I have a dead battery. It's got about four and a half volts in it, which is clearly enough to make it think it's a battery. So while this thing struggles for existence, let's go inside, see if we can even turn the key, see what we find. Got that tan interior of your dreams. Don't worry about the carpet. Where we're going, we don't need roads or uh, carpet probably. And that's the only little bit of rust on this entire car is right there behind the seat. Also, not gonna need a headliner where we're going, or sound ending up there, whatever tiny bit was there. One of the nicest head units out of our entire fleet of vehicles. Not even mad, you can actually see through the crack in the dash. This is where I keep all my spare quarters and screws. Glove box here with uh, 10 pages ripped out of the manual. Hopefully they're the ones we need. I love how in this generation, the Volvo emblem looks like a rectangular butthole. Got defroster, hazards, air conditioning, all the nice things. Got uh, what's left of the center console situation. Feels like we got emergency brakes. Uh, we have seat heaters um, with manual door locks and manual windows and manual door locks. Um, 
But we got seat heaters on cloth seats, so that, that makes sense. Just leave this here. That doesn't look like a complete mess, so I'll just ignore that. So the story unfortunately goes that the original owner passed away, which is cool that it was the original owner. Bless his heart. The unfortunate problem was when the son took it over, well, they wanted to turn it into a race car. So in true fashion, it looks like the first thing they did was strip it. Because race car. All right, but enough messing around with this sticky stuff I found on the floor. Let, let's get down to business. Oh God, it's on me, gross. Okay, well, let's go ahead and start. What the? Let's just see if it cranks. It's fine. Uh, those motor mounts are working goddamn over. <laughs> I don't know who designed those motor mounts, but I assume they were torn. They are not. <laughs> they are still looking pretty solid underneath there, so good job, Oval. But anyways, I didn't hear the fuel pump anytime we were cranking. I expected to hear it when uh, I turned the key to ignition. Not familiar if that's just not how Volvos work, but um, definitely not hearing the pump. And from memory serves me, right, these cars actually have two pumps. That's Two in Spanish. There's a pump inside the tank that is just more of a lift pump that gets it out of the tank. And then there's another high pressure fuel pump that's somewhere mounted on the frame or down below that actually gets fed from that pump and then kicks it forward. Now, I also know that the fuse block in this thing uses those crappy pill style fuses from like all European cars. Well, I know sometimes you can get corrosion on there and you gotta spin them in their socket to make them work. So we're gonna go ahead and try that, see what we come up with first and then um, maybe do a little bit more research. So ironically, the, the only panel that's in here still is seemingly the fuse cover panel, but looking at the, we do actually have one blown and not in the good way. This is the bad way of getting blown and it's fuse number four, Pomp A Carburante Dan's Reservoir, which is seemingly Spanish for in-tank fuel pump. That sounds like a, a little bit of our problem. We also have another fuse, but it's not blown as the main fuel pump. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That would definitely cause it not to run, but so would being not out of gas. So, but no, no, I don't hear the pump. So we, well, no, they would make, uh, yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the fuel pump. Let's go ahead and see if we can jump these and see if we have a dead short in the line before we just get too crazy and see if we can mess up here. So I found a spare blue fuse out of something else we're not gonna be using. And true fashion, it's a higher amp rating than it was before, but that's fine because I went ahead and tested uh, the each side of the terminal, nothing short in the ground. So maybe it was just a fluke. Maybe it'll fire off when I actually turn the key and turn into a real forest fire. Who knows? Let's see what happens. Ignition in three, two, one. It feels silly that we just watched that fuse not blow for like six seconds. Never gonna get that time back of your life, but I never said you were. So in this one instance, getting blown, good. Because that means that circuit is probably not dead. Well, well it kind of is because I'm not hearing anything come to the back, but I did some research on the Googles. Turns out these cars, they only flick the fuel pump on for one second-ish when you turn the ignition on, and then it waits to actually see a pulse from the distributor to see if it's running instead of just keeping the fuel pump running all the time. That's their safety mechanism for if they were in an accident and you die in a fire and all that good stuff. But I'm not hearing that one second pulse, so that's leading me to believe that the fuel pump relay might not be working, but it could also be that the pickup on the coil's not working, and since all of that just sounds goddamn awful and I don't feel like doing it, now I know this wiring bypass looks a little bit like a trip down a recreational meth lane. Okay, well, let's see if it works. Now you gotta listen carefully. I hear the sweet, sweet hum of victory. <laughs> Or in this case, uh, it, one of the fuel pumps at least is trying. It's holding on for dear life, <laughs> by God. But before we get two in the game, let's go ahead and put a little, little bit of gas in it. Make sure it's got something in there besides just water before we waste any more time turning it over with nothing in there. Oof. And just to give her all the vitamins and nutrients this old gal craves, we're just gonna give her a little bit of B12. 
from the Berrymans. That's gonna ease that fuel pump into <laughs> probably death. And um, well, hopefully clean out a little bit of garbage and crams it somewhere else in the system. Once you get her topped off, just take a little hit for you. Oh, that's some spicy water. Take a little hit for yourself, you know? Probably won't hurt you, probably make you stronger. Now we put some gas in there, a couple gallons worth, see if it registers on the gauge. All right, let's see what we got in here now. Okay. Oh, the gas gauge does move. Hey, look at that. Okay, that's really going up there. Like, really going up there. All right, that's enough. That's, that's, that's good. It's full. Okay, I'm starting to not believe what you're saying is true. Um, there's, there's no possible way that's right. Okay, so I'm pretty sure the fuel level sending in on this little guy is fucked, but it's also possible it's a reverse TARDIS where it's actually smaller on the inside and five gallons can take you from completely empty to completely full. So on the, for shits and giggles, which is uh, fine until someone giggles and shits, let's go ahead and start it. <laughs> what? <laughs> Uh, uh, it started on the first click. <laughs> okay. Um, let's take a look at this. Okay, it sounds a little, I hear some, some ticking. So, uh, that's interesting. <laughs> but I was not expecting it to start on the first key touch. Classic Volvo. Or in this case, not at all classic Volvo. Um, okay. Let's take a look around this and see what we can find out. Sounds like an old Singer sewing machine. Like one from the late 1800s that's never been oiled and left out in a field to rust. Yeah, really nice. Sounds like we got a heat shield failing over here or part of the engine block just fell off, but not quite sure what's going on. Oh, looks like we got some sort of oil leak down there too. Let's. Maybe we'll investigate that. Now, I don't feel any real heat in her yet, but um, let's go ahead and shut her off, and then we'll go back and check things like coolant because I was not expecting it to fire off first try. I did check the oil earlier, so it has that, but we'll have to give her a once over on all these fluids and. Let's just shut her off before that half of the block falls off. All right, I went in and topped her off with coolant. Now it shows is just low, so that's probably all we need to do. Now I've got some silicone vacuum lines left over from redoing them on our Ford F-150, which that's got a revival video coming out soon too. So I think I'm gonna take any of the ones that have the same diameter and uh, go ahead and swap those puppies out while, just while I'm in here make sure things like the ignition advance vacuum line, uh, that's probably one of the more important ones, at least hooked up for a drive. And maybe some of the other ones are connected to, those other ones probably don't matter, especially if they're just emissions, but we either gotta cap them or not cap them. Or, well, gotta, gotta do some, I'm gonna go get some vacuum lines. Now, just like a Halloween party, the day isn't complete unless we bust out a smoke machine. And this is the coolest new toy I have found. You can hook it up to your car to find emissions leaks. It runs on baby oil, don't we all one way or the other? And then all you do is plug it into a vacuum line. It does a smoke show and lets you know where the leaks are. While it looks like hell, it was actually torn on the bottom side of the port. So without poking around there and looking, you really couldn't tell that this was 100% failed and leaking vacuum all over the place. So to help me locate and find all the lines, went ahead smoke machined her. And what I originally thought was coming out of the bottom of the air box, well, that was actually coming out around the crank and the front fender, which is ironically where the charcoal canister on this car is located. One of the lines was just completely gone, <laughs> like peedied. Now the other one, well, that one was just a little shown its age, but we can fix that. 
If I didn't know better, I'd say I built this car. Got a plastic tub with a handmade metal bracket, zip ties around it, and to make sure it doesn't leak, they just covered it with tar. Did I? <laughs> Dad? Now, Volvos have something kind of akin to a PVC valve system, but they call it a flame trap. They technically have an oil separator buried terribly down below the intake manifold, and it does horrifying things inside, but this little guy likes to get clogged, and ironically, it looks pretty clean, like suspiciously clean. My guess is that the only record I can actually find of this vehicle is from 2008 when I ran the VIN. And then they just never really drove it, which would kind of make sense for the mileage and kind of make sense for, we knew it just stopped being driven and not there was an actual mechanical failure because race car was the life strategy for it. But um, I don't actually, this is kind of baffling to me. I expected to pull this thing apart and see so much carbon in it that I was like, well, there's your problem. I doesn't really just, okay. Not, not really sure to make all this, but um, I think we got it ready to maybe uh, take for a little bit of a longer drive. So um, see what we can do. So let's see if it runs any better with some fresh vacuum lines and a mini tune-up. Nope, it still uh, starts about the same, honestly. It runs about the same. <laughs> so uh, let's take her for a drive. All right, now we're gonna take her for our first drive. Found reverse by feel. Can't see goddamn anything that direction, so it's probably fine. No honk if something goes really wrong. Okay, all right, okay. Well, we're doing good so far. Made it 12 feet. Found drive. <laughs> Sounds like a boat if you were to slowly flood it and then just let it drown in the water just like the Swedes wanted. Give her the beans. All right, we got her up to 25 miles an hour, okay. Yeah, I can see myself sad driving this every day. Yeah, all right. Oh, we got a warning light on the dash and it is actually the warning light. Um, so that's interesting. Uh, the temperature is back to, I guess, almost normal. It's kind of just, I, I would say that's normal. Gas is full still, which I know that can't possibly be true because we went from out to full within five gallons. That math, son, doesn't check. <laughs> you know, it's, it is what it is, an 88 Volvo. Didn't expect a lot from it new. Don't expect a lot from it now, honestly, son.
possibly the most peaceful first drive I've ever had on any vehicle. But there is one thing to address, because race car, a 16 year old boy cut off the exhaust. <laughs> Uh, I'd kind of like that to happen because uh, uh, the carbon monoxide vibe isn't really what I'm going for in this particular Volvo. So later this week, I'm gonna take it to get a real exhaust on it. Got that fresh new exhaust on here. So let's go ahead and fire it up and see if we hear it. Mm. Hear if we see it. Okay, at the exact moment we fired up, a diesel decides to use its exhaust brake, but that's impressively quiet. Like, uh, I can now hear myself think. Okay, so rarely do I put an exhaust on a car that's stock and considered an improvement, but I think this is... Yeah, the fact that I can't hear it is actually a positive in this instance. Still got a little bit of road noise, but don't we all? Yeah, this is um, way nicer. And I also don't just smell it 24 seven, which again, in the right time, it's fine. A Volvo from the 88 is not necessarily the right time. This is a win. Best $270 I spent on exhaust in a long time. So what have we learned about Volvos? Well, sometimes their revivals <laughs> are about as boring as the cars themselves, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. I think the fact that this thing started after Lord knows how long sitting, after so many hundred thousand miles, is a testament to Volvo quality and ingenuity for the time. But now that you can hear yourself think inside the cabin, I did find this amusing little tidbit. If you press any of the climate control buttons, they just massively hiss a vacuum leak, so much so that the engine RPM fluctuates. <laughs> oh, I can't make that one up. So it sounds like that is actually gonna be our next fix, but stay tuned. We're already getting some sound deadener to this thing because I love testing the before and after videos of sound deadening insulation. And we're not gonna be just testing butyl mat this time. We're gonna do some foams and mass loaded vinyl as other sound deadening solutions and seeing what kind of results we get. So stay tuned for this project. And if you like more of this crap, do that. Okay, whoa, all right, buddy, just do the thing right there. Don't get all, anyway, if you don't like this, well, <laughs> you, that happens. The metal scrape in the middle of that exhaust note <laughs> concerns me, but it's not, not, I can't see it from my driveway, so it's not really a problem.